every Sunday night at 7.15. Catchphrase, the top prize quiz show where a lucky contestant could win one of these exotic holiday prizes. It's fast. It's fun. Play Catchphrase every Sunday at 7.15. In just a moment, we join ITN for the latest national and international news. Hey, six of my mates are free in the jungle. Winners on the track. Proven on the road. The metros, including the most economical small car in Britain, with the lowest combined depreciation servicing and fuel costs over a two-year period. Now, better and better, with five new models and prices from around £4,000. The 1986 Austin Rover Metro, designed and built in Britain. Now we're motoring. Walls Vionetta could leave you with one small problem. One slice is never enough. Bonjour, messieurs et mesdames. Voulez-vous coucher avec Monsieur Mitterrand in a moderate oven until light and fluffy? Tarayadara! Inglese pasta cannelloni. Chapati papa da mahatma taj mahal. And today, critics discuss. This is Capital Radio 194, and this is the new Kenny Everett show going out live every Saturday from noon to two. Someday, someone will stop at nothing to get Harry Fox. I want you to find Harry Fox. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, I think that you should know that I'm only Mr. Fox's temporary help. My dear, you may be more temporary than you think. By the way, where is she? Who knows? Dad, Dad, there's, there's, there's a bus pulling out. The bus! Watch the bus! Oh, Dad, don't, don't do it. Don't! Dad! Fasten your seatbelts. 8.45 Sunday. This is LWT. Now the news. <laughs> Swedish police have launched their biggest manhunt for the gunman who assassinated the country's Prime Minister late last night. Mr Olaf Palmer was shot in the back while walking home unguarded with his wife after going to the cinema. Police now believe the same bullet that killed the Prime Minister grazed his wife. They say they don't suspect a political motive, but they have no strong clues to the killer's identity. They think it could be the work of a madman. Police cordoned off the area where Mr. Palmer and his wife Lisbeth were strolling when the assassin struck. Two eyewitnesses saw the killer, a man in his 30s, as he escaped down a side street. Mr. Palmer and his wife were taken to a nearby hospital in the city centre. But just before midnight, he was pronounced dead. Mrs. Palmer has since been allowed home. Police have launched the biggest manhunt Sweden's ever seen, but so far they have no idea who the killer is or what his motive was. The new acting Prime Minister, Ingvar Carlsson, was heavily flanked by police when he met journalists today, and security has been stepped up around the Swedish king. It came as a personal shock, as a friend who passed away uh, brutally uh, in, in a close area in Stockholm, which I really didn't thought this could happen. As news of the killing spread, ordinary people turned up at the scene of the assassination. The Swedes have been stunned by this, the first political murder in their country in modern times. Their leader had been acclaimed universally as a man of peace. The Queen has sent a message of sympathy to the King of Sweden. Mrs Thatcher said Mr Palmer's loss will be felt throughout the world. And the Labour leader, Mr Kinnock, said the world should weep for Mr Palmer's death.
The SDP leader, Dr David Owen, said Mr Palmer's contribution to peace will be extremely hard to replace. Sweden has lost a Prime Minister of great distinction in tragic circumstances. The world has lost a statesman of quite unique calibre, particularly in his pursuit of peace, whether East and West in nuclear disarmament or in the Third World in ending conflicts. And I, as somebody who served under him on the Palme Commission on Disarmament, have lost a valued friend. The Swedish ambassador heard about his Prime Minister's death on the radio. He'd known the man well since 1958. I would say he was the best known, uh, internationally best known politicians in, in, in Sweden today. And, uh, of course, one of the, the, uh, the most impressive politicians I have met in my life. And, and then, then to a very warm uh, personality, a uh, good personal friend. Um. Palmer was from a wealthy and aristocratic family, but became a leader of the Socialist International. He believed in what he called active neutrality. During the Vietnam War, he gave asylum to American draft dodgers and said the American bombing campaign was like the Nazi massacres but he also condemned the Soviet-led invasion of Czechoslovakia. He was Europe's youngest head of government when he started the first of his four terms as Prime Minister. He stepped up aid and campaigned for the Third World. But he was also concerned with the danger of nuclear war. He hosted the European Disarmament Conference in Stockholm when it started, the only place where the Soviet Union and the United States were talking. <laughs> 